Google is definitely one of my top watches going into this week. Again, 6.9 expiration, weekly expiration, 130 calls. The stock's at 124. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trade uh weekend update show. Hope everybody is having an awesome weekend, right? Getting some rest, some sunshine. Uh, June is upon us. The weather is starting to get uh, really, really nice. So hopefully everybody is happy, safe, uh, healthy, right? Most important, healthy and having waking up every morning uh, or at least most mornings uh, with a smile on your face. So let's talk about the market. If you guys remember going back into last weekend's update, uh, again, the market was a euphoria mode. Uh, everything was going nuts. And the only thing I kept on saying is just give us one more day, right? Just just give us one more day uh, going into Monday. Just one more day, right? Because we've seen this movie before. We've seen this euphoria before. Uh, even going back as early uh, as 2020. We've seen this. We know how it's going to end. So every single day that it keeps on extending its move, we're pretty happy, right? We're pretty happy. Um, you know, traders are in generally in a very, very good mood because stocks are being exaggerated. And what happened last week, uh, for those of you guys who are just passive investors or just part-time traders, we kept on going. We kept on going and going and going. And, you know, when you look at the tape, just absolutely amazing, right? We keep on asking for one more day. We got one more week out of it. Uh, NASDAQ, uh, six consecutive weeks of gains, uh, just going out of its mind. Uh, if you guys remember, all the way back to 2022, we lost 31% uh, for the year. Uh, and if you guys recall, uh, right when we reclaimed the 50-day moving average around the January 11th to January 12th area, if you go all the way back to these videos, I was saying I wouldn't be surprised if the NASDAQ made back 15, 20% for the year, just because again, uh, markets are usually exaggerated in both directions. And in, in my wildest dreams, I never thought we'd be up 33% six months uh, into the year. And I think a lot of people uh, you know, echo that sentiment, but boy, oh boy, the, the action has been out of its mind. Um, technology shares have been great. Somebody posted, uh, somebody posted, I think it was a day or two ago, um, you know, some of the just really big winners. Let me see if I can find it really quickly. Really big winners uh, for the year. And, and you could just see the dramatic moves. I mean, look look at the moves going into Friday's session. You had NVIDIA up 169%, Facebook up 127%, uh, AMD 82%, Tesla 74%, Amazon nearly 50%. So it, it's just absolutely amazing. And I know you still see people you know, belly aching. Oh, this stinks. The market's up only five. It's not up five stocks. It's not five stocks. It, it, it's like saying, you know, if you take out all hundred members of the Nasdaq 100, it'd be it'd be right on the year. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. It is what it is. My, you know, aunt had should be my uncle. So my point is, you know, don't you're missing out on a really incredible tape. You're you're belly aching because you're trying to rationalize uh, a market that's not ever. Uh, going to be rational and never will be. I'm doing this for uh, going on my 25th year. There's no, there's never been a day that I go, oh, wow, that makes sense. It always is going to be irrational. So instead of belly aching and complaining about it, it's out of your control. Just enjoy it, okay? Enjoy it. And if you're not enjoying it, what do you want to tell me? You know, I don't want to, you know, don't send the bad energy in in the other direction. We don't want to hear it, right? There's only there's two type of people in this world, right? There's energy givers and there's energy takers. And I'm I'm telling you, as the day is long, I'm doing this for a long, long time, and I'm gonna be 49 years old in about four or five days, nobody wants an energy taker in their life. It's just, nobody wants that person. Uh, you're mentally drained, you're emotionally drained. Nobody wants to be a part of that person. If you are that type of person, you know, look yourself in the mirror and try to really get better because at the end of the day, no one cares, right? No one cares about your problems. Everybody has problems, everybody has issues. Work harder, right? Work harder. We're all human beings. We're trying to get better. We're trying to be better parents spouses, husbands, wives, friends, brothers, sisters, everything under the sun. We don't want negative energy. Nobody in their right mind wants another person's problems in their lives where they're trying to uh, get them off the hurdles of their own. So be a better human being, be a better friend to yourself, and just try to put a smile on your face. So you'll always see life a little bit more su sweeter if you have a glass half full uh, personality. So that's that. 
So what do we do going into this week, right? If anybody's traded during the dot-com bubble, or even hell, even going back to 2020, you know, everybody knows eventually this is going to end, right? Eventually, the $2 candles that were uh, normal turned into $10 candles eventually will turn back into $2 candles again, okay? And the one thing that, you know, un unfortunately uh, might happen to me and happen to a lot of my friends, you know, during the dot-com bubble, we never thought it was going to end. And the internet craze lasted 15, 18 months. We never thought it was going to end. And one day it ended. And what happens is when you have those, you know, when you have the visors on um, and, you know, you're, 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 you don't believe it's going to happen. You don't want to think it's going to happen. Oh, no, it's not going to happen to me. What's going to wind up happening is you're going to give up, you know, two, three months worth of performance in two sessions. And that's what and that's exactly what happens every single time. The best way to avoid that is to, you know, take off the rose colored glasses. We've been talking about this nonstop and just take it day by day. If the market extends tomorrow, and again, granted, there was a headline uh, over the weekend that uh, President Biden has signed uh, the debt ceiling uh, law, right? It's, it's now into law. Uh, now it extends uh, the debt ceiling talks to 2025. If we're all, God willing, we're all alive, we're going to start doing this again. Debt ceiling, I hope they raise it. It was never a question in doubt if they're going to raise it. We've been talking about this for three weeks. It's just all pandering. They wanted to see what side, you know, what they could get from the other side. The Democrats wanted to see how much uh, the Republicans can break and vice versa. And ultimately, like I said, no president wants to run on a re-election being the candidate. They let the United States default. Yada, yada, yada. Here we are. So the question is, is this uh, a sell the news event? Very possible, right? Very, very possible. Uh, and, and we always talk about how we always have to be prepared on both sides of the market. Uh, going into tomorrow, of course, there's, you know, you have to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt, right? That's what we've been doing every single day. You got to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt. Every stock is losing its mind. How can you not? But we also know, hey, you're one trade away from buying that overextended stock, right? Jumping out of the 12th floor. And next thing you know, again, whatever you, you've you made in the last two, three weeks, two, three months, whatever the case may be, could go just like that in two, three days if you are uh, if you are uh, believing that the market will never end. It will. So we're hoping for Monday, right? We're hoping for Monday, uh, but I'm definitely, definitely prepared uh, just in case it is a potential sell the news uh, type of scenario. Uh, again, you, you can make a run up, you, you can make a good case that the run up here uh, was uh, the uh, event of the debt ceiling deal being done, and now it has. Uh, you could also make the case that, hey, the market just doesn't give an F. The market just wants to go higher, right? You can make that case as well. So we always want to be prepared on both sides of the market. The key is, again, guys, watch the stocks that, again, are either coming out of their bottom channels, out of their middle channels. And again, as, as the market goes higher and higher every single day, it's harder, right? It's absolutely harder to find these uh, these tight setups. But hey, again, that's our job as traders. And that's what we've been trying to do uh, every single day. We're trying to correlate uh, the option flow with the channel. The longer a channel bases, the higher probability it'll get above that base. And once it gets above that base, if the institutional money flow comes in, they start bet betting uh, pretty big, deep out of the money calls with short-term expiration. Those are the stocks, right? Those are the stocks we want to pay attention to. You know, we, we've been talking about every level on testing. Literally every level on Tesla, when it broke, when it started getting above this little baby channel here, and get above the baby channel here, reclaim the 50, reclaim the linear regression line, reclaim this 93 level, yada, yada, yada. Here we are. Again, all you have to do is go back to every night video. Tesla's been literally organically taking vol every single level nice and smoothly, but that's because they were coming in for two, three weeks of 210, 215, 220, 240, 250 short-term expiration. The, uh, like, like I'm not an options trader, but I use options flow religiously. It's telling me exactly what institutional money flow is trying to be. I'm not trying to, to look for the hot stock. I'm looking for the stock technically that's going to turn hot. And that's exactly what happened to Tesla. Once it started building, it finally got loose, just went out of its mind and went to 217. And 217 uh, turned out to be the exact same level that it got rejected on the weekly chart, right? If you go back to the January, February, right? February 13 highs, you can see it's a double top. I'm not saying it's going lower. I'm just using visual, you know, visual, uh, visual illustrations to kind of show you. It got rejected here at 217, went lower, got rejected here at 217, you know, came in a little bit about $4 off its highs. So you can see here from the weekly point of view, right? And again, maybe Tesla has one or two days of maybe back testing, but you can see now where the next key level of Tesla is. It needs to get above 
uh, this double, I don't want to use the word double top. I know I used it just now, but it needs to get above this level where it stopped twice off this 217 level the next uh, couple of days, maybe the next couple of weeks and start building a really, really higher basis. Again, they did come, they continuously came for, even on Friday, the 240s, the 250s, uh, end of June's uh, expiration. So again, there's a lot of major, major money flow uh, still continues to go uh, into this name. The key is, you know, can the stock kind of back test for a couple of days just to give a little bit of rest? I'm actually hoping it kind of does. You kind of need it to kind of reset a little bit. The last thing you want to do in any stock is have a scenario too far, too fast. And that's not exactly what you want to do here. Same thing, you know, is Google, right? You know, look at Google's chart, right? Now, Google for the last, you know, had a great, great run in May. Absolutely great. And it's done absolutely nothing for the last two weeks. You can see that. So on Friday, they started coming in for this week. So this week's expiration, the June 9th expiration for 130 calls nonstop. One after another, after another, after another. And that's exactly what happened with Tesla's calls. One after another, after another, they were coming. And again, it doesn't need to translate that the next day the stock is going to explode. It doesn't even need to translate the stock's going to go at all. But at least, again, you're getting some sense of where the institutional money flow is happening. Again, when you're trading like a small cap stock, a mid cap stock, you're trading with retail, right? You're trading with retail. Everybody's, you know, you have, you have people who are trying to short these things. The people are trying to run these things. They're fighting over each other. Your mother's this, your father's that, right? If, you know, the whole big battle oil on social media, when you're trading with, with institutional money flow and they're betting millions of dollars in one direction with short-term expiration, there's always a very high probability that the stock is going to go in that direction if the stock confirms. So again, Google is definitely one of my top watches going into this week. Again, 6-9 expiration, weekly expiration, 130 calls. The stock's at 124. So I'm watching off the top of this channel. Does it have to confirm? No, it doesn't have to be confirmed. But our job as traders is not to anticipate, right? Not to guess. Our job is to wait. Now that we have the data, now that we have the setup, now that we have the option flow, now we're just waiting for confirmation. So if it doesn't, you know, if it doesn't confirm and the stock just gets absolutely destroyed, guess what? We have a bottom range here that we're watching as well. Just because the option flow is coming in hot and heavy doesn't mean the stock's going to go. So that's why we're always prepared on both sides of the market. We're constantly watching the data. We're constantly understanding the bottom of the range here, the top of the range here, and there is no guessing. We're not in the guessing business. We're in the collection of data business and waiting for it to confirm organically. And that's a very, very uh, important part. One group that actually woke up this week, right, was the IWM. And that's a very, very important group, not because, well, I'm going to trade members of the IWM, but this represents speculation money, right? This is the Russell, and this is the, a lot of the small, smaller mid-cap stocks. The most important part here, this is the first close, guys, oversupply, right? Oversupply, and the supply was started all the way back to January, February, March the 9th. So this is the first close oversupply. Watch, the, for all you guys who trade the IWM or that ETF, Watch this thing. If this thing could start building 182, 183, who knows? This thing could get start getting a move to 186, right? You, look at this, all this room you have. So what's good about you know what's good about the Russell is it's going to give you another sense of is the euphoria over? And if the Russell starts really extending, there's a high probability that everything else will start extending as well. Not because the Russell is the leader, it's not. It's the lagger, but it does represent speculation money, and it's super duper important. Uh, to kind of understand where the money flow is coming from. Institutional money flow is great, but when institutional combined with retail money flow, that is what we see called euphoria. So it's very, very uh, important to see. But we'll see. You know, we'll see if Monday uh, turns out to be sell the news or uh, gap and go. The market is crazy. We're going to the moon, paper hands, hot hands, whatever the hell they're called. Uh, but the point is we are ready for both sides. So let's talk about Friday. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, the market continues to go. We've, you know, we've been talking about Roku, uh, just the same we talked about RBLX. RBLX on Thursday, we finally caught a move uh, after missing the 50-day remount. Uh, but Roku, 5930 needs to build. Here is Roku. We talked about Roku for a couple of days. So it finally got above the 50-day moving average and traded right to supply at 61. Took out the 5930, traded to uh, 61. So it needs to obviously get get above 61 to start building uh, into the 63s. Uh, Nvidia, you know, never made it up there. Uh, 405, 450, 403 needs to build. It, it went pre-market 405, but it never got there in the regular session. Uh, Tesla, again, you know, what else is there to say, right? 
Uh, the, the previous day, it finally got above that 204.50 level. Um, you know, it, we came in long, needs to confirm 210. It went to 213, and then it went to 217 and hit the weekly supply. Uh, Microsoft had a monster, monster move at the open. 3360 needs to build. Here was Mr. Softy. And look, look at this move here from the 3360 level, right? It took out this whole channel here in the 60 minute and went from 3360 to 3750 in a matter of minutes. And obviously everything else uh, reversed course, just like it did. Uh, ZUO, we talked about this. I think we, I believe we talked about this on Wednesday. Uh, 109011 needs to build. Slower mover, but finally... Uh, broke out of its little consolidation after earnings. Nice move here, trade into the 1450s. Uh, this thing looks like it's going higher. Netflix never got there to the 407, 408 level. Uh, Google, we waiting to the downside channel before, obviously, before the day started in the option flow. And I believe that is it. Riot, you know, never got there. Uh, Apple, and Apple never got there as well. It got rejected 8150 several times. And I believe that is it. Yeah, that's it. So, you know, going into this week, guys, again, keep an open mind. Uh, you know, again, you want to be uh, very fiscally responsible with your money. I, I've been there. I've been in your shoes uh, talking about this market's never going to end. This is the greatest thing. It's going to be, it ends. It ends really, really quick. And it's not going to, again, tap you on the shoulders to tell you it's time to get out. Uh, if you are, again, guys, curious uh, about pivots, I would love to open up the world of pivots to you. Uh, it is completely unbiased. It is completely motivated strictly on data, on um, supply and demand. You don't need to thank anybody. You need to hold anybody in high regards. You don't need to ask 30 people their opinion. It's all in the charts. I'd love to expose uh, this world for you. So if you are having trouble uh, and you're trading random stocks, getting random results, uh, the, the beta names are very, very specific, very patiently uh, oriented. But once it clicks and you fully understand the dynamics, of what these stocks do, it becomes uh, pretty, pretty cool. Guys, God bless you. Have a great, great remainder of your Sunday. And with God's help, I'll see you guys tonight, tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Have a great, great day.